What's going on everybody, Ronnie DiMaggio here, product specialist at BMW of Morristown. And in today's video, we're doing something a little bit different. We are not gonna be focusing on any one specific car. In fact, we're gonna talk about just about every car in our lineup because we are going to be going through BMW's badging and naming structure for their current lineup. BMW's nomenclature has been the source of many questions in our comment section and also from clients that visit us in person, people asking what's the difference between a 28i and a 30i or a 40i and a 60i. So we're gonna go through all of those questions. In this video, we're gonna start with the very bottom of the lineup, the two series of the X1. We're gonna go all the way up to the eight series and the X7, seven series. Talk about what all the numbers mean on the back of a BMW and how BMW structures their lineup. So by the end of this video, you will know exactly what every number and letter on the back of a BMW means. And you'll be very familiar with the way that BMW organizes their lineup. So with that said, we're gonna to switch to a handheld camera, walk around our lot in our showroom, and explain all of that stuff to you. So let's get started. All right, so we are outside. Like I said, we're gonna walk the lot. We might peek in the showroom as well to put some cars in front of the camera to give you guys examples of exactly what we're talking about when I sort of demystify and explain BMW's naming and badging structure. And in the process, we're also, of course, going to learn a lot about the lineup organization. So let's start at the bottom with the 228i Grand Coupe X-Drive, which we have right in front of us. So let's talk about the badge on the right first. That's sort of the important one, 228i. So if you see, we're gonna talk about non-Ms and non-electric cars first. So we're gonna go through all the normal series models, non-M first. So this is true of all the non-Ms. So that first uh, number, the two in this case is the model of the car or the series in BMW speak, the series that it belongs to. So this is a two series. The 28 or the two numbers after the series designation indicates the engine size or the engine output. Now, in today's world of BMW, the numbers don't actually correlate to the displacement of the engine where they used to in the past. So in the past, if you had like a 525, it was a two and a half liter engine. 328 was a 2.8 liter engine, so on and so forth. Now it doesn't really mean anything. Those numbers do not designate engine size or engine output. They are just a designation that correlates to a certain displacement or a certain output. They do not actually represent them with their numerical values. So 28i in the case of the two series indicates a two liter four cylinder engine with coincidentally 228 horsepower. Now it is not called the 228 because it makes 228 horsepower. Instead, it's called the 228 because it has a two liter four cylinder engine. That's just the designation that BMW chose to use for the two series. So the first number is the series. The second two numbers are the engine designation. And then that last letter, the I is for gasoline direct injection. Now that used to be more significant because BMW in the US at least also produced diesels and way long ago they had, you know, 325Es and whatnot. Uh, but in the US, everything that has an engine is gas powered. There are no longer any diesels. This might be a good time to mention that this is specific to the US market. So uh, BMW obviously sells different cars in different markets. We're in the United States. So we're gonna be talking about the US model lineup. But anyway, the I is for gas direct injection when it's after the numbers. If it's before the numbers, that means it's an electric car. But like I said, we'll get into the electrics and the M's later. And of course, X drive is all wheel drive. So that is the basic fundamentals you have first number meaning series, second two numbers as an engine designation, and that last letter stands for gas direct ingestion. Now, the full model name of this car is the BMW 228i Grand Coupe X-Drive. So, with the even numbered sedans, two series, four series, eight series, no more six series uh, anymore, the Grand Coupe means it has four doors and sort of that sort of slope back roof line, and the even numbers come in Grand Coupe, Convertible in the case of the 4 and 8 series and Coupe in the case of 2, 4 and 8 series. So you have Grand Coupe, Convertible, and two-door Coupe. Now, uh, that is usually reflected in the model name. So for an 8 series, for example, you have the 840i Coupe, 840i Grand Coupe, or 840i Convertible, so on and so forth. So 
Uh, that's the 2 Series. Now, while we're here, I just want to point out that 2 Series and X1 are the only ones that use a 28 for their 4 cylinders instead of a 30i. Every other 4 cylinder is badged as a 30i, as those last two letters following the series, two numbers following the series. The reason the 2 Series and the X1 have a 28 is because they're transverse mounted engines. So you can get a 2 Series as an M235i Grand Coupe, and the X1 is also getting an X1 M35i. So the 35i's and the two and the 28i's are transverse mounted engines, whereas everything else is a longitudinal mounted engine. Just a little bit of clarification there. So we spent a lot of time on the 2 Series because there are a lot of fundamentals. Um, but let's move on to a 3 Series. We'll talk about a 5 Series. We'll just go through the rest of the sedan lineup pretty quick. So let's talk about the 3 Series. All right, so this is a very nicely optioned, I might add, 330i xDrive. This one also happens to have the M Sport package, tin Melbourne red, super cool spec on this one, but we're not here to talk about that. We're talking about the badges and the naming. So the 3 Series slots one above the 2 Series, of course, because as the number goes up, so does the size of the car and the price as well. So lower numbers are smaller and cheaper as far as the series goes. So three um, higher numbers are larger and more expensive. So 330i means you have a three series with a two liter four cylinder engine that makes 250 horsepower. So the 30i designation is very universally applicable in BMW. So 30i can be had on three series, four series, five series, um, X3, X4, uh, so quite a lot of models use that 30i engine. So 3 is the series, 30 is the engine, size and output, designation, and then i is, you know, gas direct injection. And X drive means it's all-wheel drive. Now the thing with the odd-numbered sedans in the lineup, unlike the even numbers, is that they only come as sedans. 3 Series, 5 Series, 7 Series can only be had as four-door sedans. There is no 3 Series Coupe, 5 Series Coupe, convertible, Grand Coupe, anything like that. They're just sedans, whereas the even numbers are offered in the case of 4 and 8 Series as Coupe, convertible, Grand Coupe, and in the 2 Series, Grand Coupe and Coupe. So that's the 3 Series. You have the Series 3, engine designation 30, direct injection for the I, and X drive. Let's take a look at the 4 Series, which is very similar to the two series. All right, this is a four series Grand Coupe. If you have a keen eye, you might notice that it's the I4, but let's pretend it's a 430i Grand Coupe only because we don't actually have any 430i Grand Coupes on the ground right now to show you. But really quickly, this is the same as the two series. You can get a four series in Grand Coupe or Coupe, but there's also a convertible and the badging is 430i xDrive which means the same thing that it does in the 3 Series. It's a 4 Series. It has that 30 engine, so a 2-liter turbo 4-cylinder with about 250 horsepower. And the I, of course, direct injection, and it is all-wheel drive with X-Drive. So that's pretty simple for the non-M 4 Series. And this will continue throughout the rest of the lineup with cars like the 5 Series and the 7 Series. So let's walk and talk. We can take a look at the 7 and 8 series over here. We don't have any 5 series right now because the 5 series is in the process of being updated to a new generation, but we do have some 7s and 8s over here. So 5 series is a little bit unique because it's in the new sort of that transitional phase. We're getting the G chassis um, or the new G chassis 5 series uh, coming up soon. So we're not sure exactly what that will look like, although we expect it to be, you know, the same as it was, 530i, 540i, maybe an M5 something, uh, and then, of course, the M, the actual M5. So here we have some 7s and an 8 series. So these follow a similar but different uh, naming structure in that the numbers are different. The 7 series and the 8 series are not offered with the same engines as, of course, the 3 series are. They're much larger cars, but the naming structure is the same. So 740i means it's a 7 series and that 40i designation means that it's a 3 liter 6 cylinder turbocharged engine with about 375 horsepower. So with 3 series and 4 series you have the 4 cylinder and the 6 cylinder. With 7 series and 8 series you have the 6 cylinder and the 8 cylinder. So as you move up the lineup the 
top of the line engine of you know the lower series becomes the base engine in the higher series. So the lowest engine you can get in the 740, in the 7 series I should say, is the highest engine you can get in the 3 series in the form of the M340 without going up to a full M3. So they both have that 40i which means they both share the same 3 liter turbocharged 6 cylinder engine. However, in the case of the 7, it's the base engine. In the case of the 3, it's the top of the line engine. So that's going to do it for the sedans. Hopefully that makes sense. I'll do a quick recap here. You have the first number of the name 228i, 840i, 540i, so on and so forth. That first number designates the series. The following two numbers designate the engine. And then that last letter, the I, is gas direct injection. Let's go through the engines really quick again. So there are a couple different designations possible. You have 28i, which is only for 228, and X1. That's a transverse mounted 2 liter 4 cylinder turbo that makes 228 horsepower. You have the 30i, which is a 2 liter turbocharged 4 cylinder. However, it's longitudinally mounted like everything else. And it makes about 250 horsepower. You have the 40i, which is a 3 liter turbocharged 6 cylinder makes 375 horsepower in 7 series uh, x5 and x7 it makes 382 in m340 anything m40i badged and that's it for the non m sedans you have 28 30i and 40i now let's talk about the m's with both the m performance models so m550 m340 m40i and we'll also talk about the full m models so let's find an M and talk about that. All right, let's talk about the M models. Now, this is quite a nice pair of cars to demonstrate the difference between an M performance model, M440, and an M model like the M3. So, in BMW's current model lineup, there are two tiers, so to speak, of M division vehicles. You have the M performance models, some people call these like M light, and then you have the full-fledged, full-blown M models. Now, only one is, you know, a true full-fledged M car, and that's, of course, the models that have an M followed by just one number, M3, M4, M5, M8. And then you have the M performance models, which are not necessarily full M cars. They are not you know, true quote unquote M cars in the traditional sense, but they are manufactured with the M division's special touches in mind. So they are fine tuned by the M division to be higher performing, but they are not full M cars. So if you see a car like an M3 here that has just an M and one number, that's a full M car. If you see a car like an M440 that has an M and then multiple numbers, whether it's two or three, that is an M performance car. The single number M cars are the ones that are full blown M cars, are the highest performing cars that BMW offers, and they are the ones that everybody wants. Now, that's not to say the M lights, the M performance cars, M440, M340, M550, so on and so forth, aren't great cars, because they are. They perform as good, if not better, than the M cars that came before them. They are just not engineered to as high performing of a standard as the uh, M full M cars are. So that's sort of the general gist of the M cars. One number means it's a full M car. Multiple numbers, whether it be two or three, means it's an M performance line car. Let's just run through all of the M cars really quick. You have M2, M3, M4, M5 upcoming, and M8 again. With the even numbers, uh, you can choose your body style. Uh, for example, there's an M4 coupe and convertible, same with M8. With the odd numbers, you're just getting what you're getting, and it's a sedan. M3, M5 are sedan only. M2 is coupe only for now. We'll see if that changes. Um, and then for the M performance models, as far as sedans and not SUVs, you have M240 coupe, you have M340, M440, uh, M850. There was an M550, again, five series is in that transitional phase. So with, again, coupe uh, and convertible, grand coupe choice, you have that with the even numbers, so you can get an M440 coupe, M440 convertible like this, 
M440 Grand Coupe. Same with the M850, you can get a coupe convertible or a Grand Coupe. So those are the M models. Now these work sort of similarly uh, with SUVs. So with SUVs like these X3s and X7s over here, you can have an M model, X3M, X4M, X5M, X6M, or you can have an M performance model, X3M40, X4M40, X5, M60, X7, M60, so on and so forth. So that works the same with SUVs as it does with sedans. But before we sort of get ahead of ourselves, let's just talk about the general naming scheme of the SUVs. We have quite a few SUVs over here. We have a ton of X3s in stock. Uh, so if you want an X3, let us know. Um, but with the X3 and the X5, X7, it works just like the sedan does where you have the series and then the engine designation. It's just written out a little bit differently. So let's take a look at this X1 so we're a little bit further away from the construction over there. All right, so with the X1 and all the other SUVs, the naming works very similarly to how it does with the sedans. You still have the series designation and the engine designation. It's just written out a little bit differently. So with the SUVs, you have a, the letter X and then you have a number immediately after it. That is your series designation. So that X1 means the same thing that the two does or the three or the four would in a sedan or a car model. So X1 is the series. This is the smallest SUV we offer, thus the lowest number. And then on the right, you have the word X drive, or in the case of our rear wheel drive SUVs, X3, X5, you have S drive, uh, but most of the time you'll have X drive and then you'll have two numbers. The engine designation in this case, the 20i means the same thing it does on the 28i means the same thing that it does on the X1 as it does on the 2 Series Grand Coupe over there. So it's a 2 liter turbo 4 cylinder with about 228 horsepower. Well, let's look at some other SUVs to give you some more examples. So this is an X3 and it is an xDrive 30i. So xDrive of course means that it's all wheel drive, 30i means the same thing here that it does on the 3 Series, the 4 Series. Um, and the 2 Series Coupe, that means it is a 2 liter turbo 3 4 cylinder with about 250 horsepower. Here's an X7, we have the xDrive 40i, 40i, 3 liter turbo 6 cylinder, 375 horsepower, just like on the 760. Uh, we have an X5 down here, if we can find that. So this is an xDrive 40i. Again, 40i means the same thing that it does on you know all the other cars with a 40i, three liter turbo, six cylinder. And if it's a non-M 40i uh, like these, it is uh, 375 horsepower. On the M 40i's, you have 382 horsepower. So that's M340, M440, X3, M40. So let's talk about how the M stuff works a little bit more specifically with the SUVs like this X7 M60. Again, not a full M car because there are two numbers after the M. If this were an X5 M with, I guess, no numbers technically after the M, but, you know, just an X5 M, you know, this is obviously an X7, but if they made an X7 M, you know, the X7 M would be the full M car and the M60 would be the M performance car. So with the SUVs, it goes model designation, and then you have an M followed by the engine designation. In the case of 60i, it means the same thing on the X7 M60, X5 M60, X6 M60 as it does on the 760. That means it's a 4.4 liter twin turbo V8 with uh, 523 horsepower in the case of the M60s. So very similar. Once you get the sort of fundamentals down and you sort of learn the basics, it all kind of makes sense. So every number means something related to either the series or the engine designation. The engine designations come after the series designation. So you have, you know, an X3 xDrive 30i, or you have an M340 or a 430i coupe, stuff like that. So that first number is the series, the model designation, and then those succeeding numbers are the engine designation. So those are the SUVs, the sedans. We talked about M versus non-M. The only thing we haven't touched on is the electric vehicles. So 
Let's go back to our i4 over here and actually treat it like an i4, not pretend it's a 430. So with the electric cars, the badge starts with an I, and then you get the model designation. So these work a little bit more like the SUVs, where you have, instead of what would be, you know, an X4, you have the I4. So that is your model designation. I means electric, and then 4 is the series of the model designations. So you have I4, I7, um, I5 upcoming. You have the IX is the electric SUV. And then you have your um, quote-unquote engine designation, more like your power designation or your motor designation. E-drive means it is two-wheel drive. So in this case, rear wheel drive, but if you see X drive, that means it's all wheel drive. So with the i4, you have the E drive 35, E drive 40, uh, and then you have the M50, which is, you know, the M performance model. And the 50i roughly correlates to the same amount of horsepower as the old 50, uh, it's not a 50i on the electrics, but it roughly correlates to the same amount of horsepower that the 50i gas cars had, so M550, X5, M50, so on and so forth. So. Um, that is the i4. With the i7, you have, you know, the i7. I think we have an i7 down here. We can walk and talk. The i7, you have the i7 X Drive 50. Now we have the M70. With the iX, you have the iX X Drive 50. Then you have the iX M60. So it works pretty similarly uh, to the SUVs. You have your model designation, but instead of an X, it's an I and then a number. And then you have your engine or power output designation, uh, but there's no I at the end because obviously there's no gas direct injection. E-drive means it is two-wheel drive and X-drive, like you see here on this I-7, means that it is all-wheel drive. So, lots of talking, lots of information, but hopefully that sort of makes sense. Uh, I will write as detailed of a written explanation of everything we just talked about as I can in the comments. So if you want this stuff in writing, I will uh, direct you to the description of the video where I'll have a written description of everything we just talked about explaining this stuff. Hopefully it'll be a little bit more concise than the video was and you can refer back to it a little bit more easily if you're ever curious. One extra thing, the even number coupe thing also applies to SUVs. So X4 is a slope back roof, so is X6. Little tidbit that just popped into my head that I realized I failed to mention, but the even numbers like with the sedans are coupes, convertibles are grand coupes. Same with the SUVs, the X4 is a sort of grand coupe SUV. You have that slope back roof. So um, that will do it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully it answered any questions. Like I said, we get a ton of questions asking how this stuff works in the comments and on test drives and things like that. So hopefully this clears things up a little bit. If you have questions, want more detail, uh, whatever it may be, let us know down in a comment and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Please follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at BMW of Morristown. And if you liked the video, please like it, subscribe to the channel if you think we deserved it. We appreciate all that stuff. Thank you guys so much for watching. We will see you in the next one.